my storm has moved away. May we bow our heads in prayer. O oh God, giver of life and conqueror of death, a help in every time of trouble. We trust that you will not grieve, will allow us to grieve or afflict us. Comfort us who mourn and give grace to us in the presence of death to worship you, that we may have sure one day of eternal life and be enabled to put on the whole trust in you, in your goodness and your mercy. Almighty God, our Father, whom from we come and whom we shall return. You have been our dwelling in all generations. You are our refuge and our strength, a very pleasant help in times of trouble. Grant us your blessing this hour and enable us to put our trust in you and our spirits may grow calm and our hearts be comforted. Lift our eyes beyond the shadows of earth and help us to see the light of eternity that we may find grace and strength for this in every time of need, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we come to celebrate and lift up and magnify the name of God for the life of one Sister Rose Marie Long, we come blessing God and thanking God for her strength and her life. And so dying, Christ destroyed our death, rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory, as in baptism rose long put on Christ. So in Christ may she be clothed with God's glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. And so friends, loved ones, family, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Rose Long. We come together in our grief, acknowledging our human loss. May the God that we serve grant us his grace that in this pain that we have, we may find his comfort and sorrow, hope, and death, the blessed resurrection. As we continue in our order of worship, we ask that those who are participating to come as listed. You've come to my rescue a thousand times. Every other voice it is a God provides in ways I can't explain and can't deny. The little that I have, he multiplies. 
Our scripture reading comes from Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 33 through 39. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, rather ye rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh interception for us. Who's, what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, nakedness, sword, or peril? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor power nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We're moving right along to the acknowledgments. I know it hurts you and you miss her. But every day that you go out into the world and live as you can, in tribute to your mom and in happiness she wanted for you, hope that thought brings some comfort and peace to your heart in the days to come. With sympathy, Tyria and Valerie. Time is God's gift. We all need time to grieve, time for reflection, to sift through memories and come to grips with what has happened. We all need time for tears, for the one who is now, and peace with God in heaven. But for ourselves, we realize that we should never be ashamed. We all need a time just to be. We need a time to feel comfort and assurance that God's everlasting love may bring and heal our hearts. Praying God's peace and comfort for you in your loss. We're here for you if you need us. Tyrone, Latrice, Keontae, and Mabel. With sympathy to your family. There's a broken thread, for it is woven from love. And it keeps family all together. For nothing as real as the moment we shared. They live in our moments forever. As difficult as this time is, we may find comfort in knowing that our loved one will always be with us. And the memories you shared will forever be a part of our life. You're always in our thoughts, the barbers. Amen. I'm sorry, little Rose just corrected me. I was supposed to read the obituary. I was trying to sit down as quickly as possible. <laughs> Rose Marie Long was born in Calvert County, Maryland on May 29, 1994. Rose was the sixth child of James Clifton Long Sr. and Ethelene Offer Long. She departed this life on Monday, June the 8th, 2020 at her home. Rose, better known as Sugar Pie, received her education in the public schools of Calvert County. She furthered her education and received certificates in counseling. Prior to retirement, she remained in the counseling field, served as a certified associate addiction counselor. She was also the one founded, one of the founding members. She was a counselor from November 1987 to February 2007. After retirement, she served as a crisis intervention counselor of the Calvert County Health Department. During her spare time, she substituted as a food service worker for Calvert County Public Schools. She said it was to stay busy, but we know it was to keep her eyes on her grandson. Rose enjoyed attending church services and he loved her church family. She enjoyed church so much she was a member of just about every organization in the church. There are many hats that belong to the members of the, the many hats included being a member of the United Methodist Women, the president of the senior choir, president of the administrative council committee, a member of the When I Was Food Ministry, a member of the finance committee, and a member of the SPRC. Outside of the church, she was a member of W.S. Brooks High School Scholarship Committee and the NAACP. She was not meeting for one of these committees. When she was not meeting for one of these committees, 
She was enjoying walking across Calvert County for exercise, keeping her beautiful yard maintained and watching the Oprah Winfrey Show and Dr. Phil. She will be remembered by all whom she came in contact with. If you ask her for her advice, she would give it to you straight. But she knew it came from, we knew it came from a place of love. Her compassion was with her family. She enjoyed watching her grandkids get up and get up and go on the bus. When they were not around, she enjoyed listening to gospel. Marvin Sapp was her favorite, favorite artist, and reading T.D. Jakes and Steve Harvey were her favorite authors. Rose leaves to cherish her memories, her son Douglas Hicks, wife Yolanda, daughter Marvella Hicks, Hawkins, I'm sorry, two grandchildren, Marquita Hutchins and Xavier Hawkins, three brothers, James C. Long Jr., his wife Alice, Darrell, wife Felicia, Patrick Long, wife Darlene, six sisters, Ethel Connolly, Larry Gross, excuse me, Leslie Gross, husband Larry, Claudia Smith, Christine Long, Darlene Long, LaShawn Brooks, husband Howard, one sister-in-law, Ruth Long, two sisters-in-law, including Alice Long, a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends, and very special son, Barry Makel. She was proceeding in death by her parents, Clifton and Ethelene Long, her brother Oliver, and Thomas Eli Long, sister Geraldine, Shirley Rapnew, Maxine Mary, and Colleen Holland.
greet you today in the marvelous and wonderful name that is above every name and that's the name Jesus I just want to say before I give a brief word to my brother and to Marquita, to Xavier, to brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews. God does have his hand on you. The pain that you're going through, the uncertainties that you feel, God is walking with you and he's talking with you. And he's reminding you, Doug, that he has his hands wrapped around you. As I explained on Monday, I don't know how long night will be. I don't even know what the future holds for me. But this I know, if Jesus leads me, I shall get home someday. And so I just want to say on behalf of the Patuxent United Methodist Church, thank you for lending your mom, your grandma, your sister, your aunt to us to, to lift up the name of Jesus in her very own way. I explained on Monday that I had never seen Miss Rose feisty, but she did get a little feisty with me a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> about a month or so ago, and out of good respect for my elders, I kind of looked up and looked at her and let her keep talking because I've been taught to respect my elders. But her sweetness, her loveliness, her smile, her joy, her enthusiasm is etched in your hearts. And I urge you today to take that with you. And every time you think that you can't make it, remind yourself as she reminded herself of Marvin Sapp's song, I never would have made it without you. And hold to God's hand and continue to walk with God in this season. I wanna read this passage of scripture taken from Proverbs chapter 4 and beginning at verse 13 says take fast hold of instruction let her not let her not go keep her for she is thy life enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men avoid it pass not by it turn from it and pass away for they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat, the, they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Here's what I want to focus today. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto perfect day. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Let us pray. God, if I've never ever needed you before, I sure enough need you now to hide me, O oh God, behind your old rugged cross. God, to allow your Holy Spirit to speak to me and speak through me as I try to minister to your family. God, give me the strength that I need and the words that I need that are from you, O oh God, that might lift the spirits of your persons who have gathered here today. Consecrate me now to your service, Lord, by your power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 
I just for a few moments would want to preach from this subject, the shining light of the just. The shining light of the just. Beloved, there are many translations of this verse that I just read into your hearing. But none is as poetic and replete with imagery as the King James Version. It states the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth no more and more unto the poor perfect day. How appropriate it is for us to be sitting here today, unbeknownst that we would be sitting here today. And there's no one in this place that is here without the influence of someone in their lives. None of us are an island unto ourselves. We all need each other to survive. We all have influences in our lives, but the question is, in what ways do we show forth that influence? If we are influenced daily by our contacts with people in general, how much more are we touched by those close to us? How grateful would we, we should be for those strong persons who have preceded us and have hopefully made impressions upon us? Few people have the power of influence upon us as do our mothers. She has touched our lives in so many ways beyond our understanding. A mother's influence at times can be subtle and quiet. Then there have been times when it has been so obvious and, and bold as thunder. The one thing we can say about mother's love and wisdom, and that is that she has been there with, with us from the, our very existence. And that she loves us from the beginning, that same love will continue even as she is lowered today in the grave. And so today we've come to praise the name of Jesus for this precious gift that, that has been given to us for some 71 years. We thank and praise God for the light that she has shown on the past of those she loved and adored. If it had not been for the light she let shine, there would be many people walking around in darkness. There's a story about a hunter who was hunting deer with some friends at an unfamiliar place. While it was day, the path was clear because of the sunlight. The two were to meet at a specific place in the woods before dark to return to the truck. The unfamiliar hunter was overwhelmed with the scenery and the beauty of the woods. He became captivated by the bright colors, the crispness of the wind, and how wonderful the birds sang in the air. Hunting became secondary to the beauty of the moment. Suddenly the sun began to set, but the hunter was so overcome by nature that he wanted to wait until the last moment, but it grew dark very quickly. In a matter of moments, all of the bright colors became dark and all the animals became quietly quiet. Suddenly he could not find the path or the place where he was to meet his friend. The darkness grew and the hunter found himself at the mercy of the night with no place to go. Suddenly he heard a noise in the woods and, and a beam of light could be seen like a flame. It was the friend who had come back to see about his friend and to lead him out of the dark. Thanks to the friend, the two of them followed the path reached the truck and were soon on their way home. Beloved, we have all lived the hunter's dream. We might not have been lost in the woods at night, but we've all found ourselves in some dark places. And when we really think about it, someone came along with a light to brighten our paths and to give us some hope. I want to ask you today, in the midst of all that you're going through, who has offered more light to our journeys than our mothers? And when we think about it, a mother's influence has been most powerful in our lives because she came bringing forth the light of Jesus Christ. Mrs. Rose Long came into the world and gave, God used her to bring forth the light of Christ to her family, her friends, and her community. 
So as we gather here today, brothers and sisters, it is a tender moment for us, but this is not a moment that we will not forget. There's something to be said for the blessings that God has given to this family and for the life that uh, he allowed Rose Long to live. The truth of the matter is that even though there are some tears because of the loss, we should be shouting for joy because Rose has reached a place where all of us one day would love and dream to go. And so we come to this moment not in in utter darkness, but in the light of Christ that has shown uh, in our lives that, that down through the years, God will keep us and protect us. Family, if there's anything you can hold on to when it comes to remembering your mother, your grandmother, your sister, your aunt, and that is that she met the light a long time ago. And when she met the light, the light revealed unto her that he would never leave her nor forsake her. The light promised that even though she would go through some tough times, as long as she kept her hand in his hand, everything would be okay. Like all of our journeys, hers came to an end abruptly. Somehow I believe, somehow I believe, she knew that no matter what she had gone through on that day, that she was still in God's hands. And that God had had. Had, had taken care of her no matter what. And because of the life she lives, the service she gave, her life will be forever enriched and our lives will be forever enriched. Rose Long left a legacy to carry on and a rich inheritance to pass on to generations to come. And so you may be asking yourself, where do we go from here? How do we continue to live our lives in the light of Christ in order that others might see the Christ in us as they saw the Christ in Rose. Here are a few things I want to leave you with today. First of all, continue to claim the memories that you have of Rose Long. Memories are a gift from God. And you have years and years of memories that will last you for a lifetime. Enjoy the memories of laughter, joy, and yes, even crying. I'm reminded of many a Sunday at Patuxent Church that I would go and give Miss Rose a hug. Just wrap my arm around her. Although I may have been a few inches taller than her. <laughs> she would look up at me and I would look down at her and she would ask me, how are you doing? Are you behaving? And I would say, yes, Miss Rose, I am behaving. And I probably meant to say today. <laughs> but I would miss her when I didn't see her in her familiar seat. I would miss her if she were not on the choir, and that was few and far and in between those second Sundays. She had a way of causing you to smile, even if you really didn't want to smile. And so I ask you to claim the memories that your mom, your sister, your grandma, your aunt left with you. Second, claim your heritage. You have a rich heritage, and money is not necessarily the biggest part of your heritage. The heritage that she leaves is priceless. It is wrapped in love, integrity, peace, respect, honor, and a good name. Many of you know who uh, are quite older know that when you left out your mother and daddy's house, most of the time they would tell you, now, son, daughter, don't go out there and mess up our name. I've learned something about the heritage of the Long family. There are uh, many uh, persons in this family that are determined, and y'all gonna get me after, after this is over, you're stubborn, <laughs> 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 
and you're going to make sure you get the job done. And, and I just want you to claim your heritage. If that's in your DNA, claim it. Don't let anybody take that from you. Rose worked hard. She, she gave of her life. She gave uh, in ways that probably we could not even imagine that she had given. And, and she placed that inside of her two children and her grandchildren. And, and it was seen by brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews. And I want you to claim that heritage on today so that when you walk out of here knowing all that has gone on in the last few weeks, knowing that when you hold your head up high, you don't have to be afraid of the dark. Because at the end of that storm that you're going through is the sweet silver song of a lark. The third thing, and I know it's hard, and it's going to be hard, is you can let her go. As hard as that is going to be, it's okay to release her and, 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 and release her back to the God who gave her to you. The Bible reminds us that God has promised us a comforter. The Holy Spirit will be there with you in the midst of these heartaches and pains and lonely times and tears and, and, and the questions of why. God has given us a comforter. And I believe Rose was filled with that Holy Spirit. Because you could love people the way she loved if you didn't have God on the inside of you. And the fourth thing is, this moment will be forever etched in our hearts and our minds. But I believe that God will give us an opportunity to not forget what has happened, but to help us to move from the moments in our lives. As a pastor, I have never, and I ain't been doing this long, but I've never had a situation as I had last week. And I know as pastors, we're supposed to have all the right words to say. We're supposed to know the scripture from front to back and we should be able to give it to our parishioners at a moment's notice because they need strength. Can I just be real with you on today? Because it's gonna be hard for me as the pastor to move from this moment. Can I just be honest with you, Doug? I don't have no words. My mind is still trying to figure this thing out. And I don't know, that's why I, I said, I don't know how long the night is going to be. Because as a pastor, you, you draw close to your parishioners. Even the ones who might get on your everlasting last nerve. You draw close to them. And, 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 and as I have been pastoring this family for some 10 some almost 10 odd years. I don't have words. The only thing I can really say to you today as you try to make your way through all of this, keep trusting God. <coughs> keep trusting God. And there are going to be moments when you don't think you can make it and God will open up a window and God will pour you out something that you needed at that very moment. Keep trusting God. Hold to that thing that makes you stronger. The love of Jesus. In times like these, the hymn writer said we need a Savior. 
It's in times like these that we need an anchor. And we have to be very sure that our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Mobella, that rock is Jesus. He's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. So as you read Xavier even more, Remind him to be very sure that his anchor holds and grips the solid rock. I don't have words. I just have prayers for you. Continuous prayers that God would strengthen you, that God would keep you, that God would hold you, and that God would sustain you. And so as the song goes. And I tried to sing it a few weeks ago that everything must change. <coughs> nothing, nothing stays the same. Everyone must change. For there are many things in life we can be sure of. Rain does come from the cloud. The sun will light up the sky, and the hummingbirds, they do fly. There are not many things in life you can be sure of, but you can be sure that the God you serve will hold you.
prepare to go down from this place be with blessing and benediction may the grace and peace of the almighty God wrap his loving arms around you and keep you and hold you and sustain you henceforth and now and forevermore and God's people said Amen of life we are in death from whom can we seek help our help is in the name of the lord who made heaven and earth god who raised christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit that dwells in you listen i will tell you a mystery we will not all die but we will all be changed for this perishable body must put on imperishability and this mortal body must put on immortality then the saying that is written will be fulfilled Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body dwells secure. You, Lord, show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Oh God, you have ordered this wonderful world and know all things in earth and in heaven. Give us such faith that by day and by night, at all times and in all places, we may without fear commit ourselves and those dear to us to your never failing love in this life and in the life to come. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Hear these words taken from John chapter 12, verses 24 to 26. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it to eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. So, Almighty God, into your hands we commend your daughter, Rose Marie Long, a sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This body we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for those who we love but see no more. Receive into your loving arms your servant. Rose Marie Long, and grant that increasing in knowledge and love of you, she may go from strength to strength in service to your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this blessing and benediction. Family, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. Don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lost. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never ever walk alone. Now may the grace of God 
the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit be with each of you henceforth now and forevermore and the redeemed of God's people said amen amen, amen.